Today we are going to tackle this title, Analyzing the Literary Text and the Collaborative Relationship Between Content and Form. This uh, lecture is presented by me, Assistant Professor Dr. Awfa Hussain al -Duri. First of all, I would like to elaborate on certain terms I think they are necessary uh, for every student to be familiar with. Every student of MA literature has to be familiar with these terms. What are they? Literary theory, literary criticism, and the text. First of all, I would like to uh, elaborate or define what do we mean by literary criticism. It is the interpretation, analysis, and judgment of piece of literature. Now, Alexander Pop, in his essay, Essay on Criticism, uses, uses the words judgment or judging to describe, identify criticism, which cannot be achieved without genius, true test, and learning. I would like to highlight, to underline this particular word, learning, alongside, of course, other words, genius, true taste. So first of all, what is literary criticism? It is to interpret, it is to analyze, it is to judge, it is to evaluate. And if I want to do all these things, I have to be genius, I have to have a true taste, and I have to be familiar with certain kind of knowledge that's learning. So what kind of knowledge do I need as an MA student? I need uh, to have certain knowledge about literary theory. Now, what is literary theory? It is a body of ideas, concepts, and aspects which are used as a tool for interpreting the text. For example, we have a theory of Marxism. And by the way, when I say literary criticism, all these, th all these theories, Marxism, feminism, colonialism, post-colonialism, uh, post-humanism, all these theories that we are familiar with, they are not purely literary theories. In fact, we can call them cultural theories because after all, when we, when we deal, for example, with Marxism, we are talking about something that is related to economy. When we talk about, uh, we are talking about something re related to another field of knowledge. We are, when we talk about feminism, we are talking about uh, issues related to women and uh, etc. But if we want to talk about pure literary theory, we can go back to Aristotle, we can go back to Gerald Genet, uh, in particular his theory of narratology. If we want to talk about pure literary theory, also we can talk about many other literary theories. Now, the third term that I want you, I want MA students to be familiar with is the text. Now, we have to differentiate between the physical work and the, the text. Now, when I, when, I, when I buy a novel or I buy uh, a, 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 a certain book, a book, this is the physical. This is the physical material that I put between my hand. But when I talk about a text, it means I am talking about something that is called a discourse, khitab. So what is a discourse? It refers to a form, a method of studying written or spoken language that is concerned with the description and analysis of extended text. Those beyond the level of single sentence, it may be as simple as one to two words, and sometimes I have two words, like for example, when I say binary oppositions. Now, these two are by themselves, these two words, binary oppositions, by themselves are what? They are a text, they are a discourse, a whole discourse, an ideology. Uh, when I say, for example, uh, cultural materialism, dialectical materialism. So here also I am talking about another text that is related, another discourse, another ideology that is related to Marxism. So you have to differentiate between the text and a literary work. Yeah, for example, when you deal with Lord of the Flies, when you deal with certain poem, when you deal with certain uh, a play, 
this is what this is a literary work of art but the text is something else and here i recommend a very famous essay written by edward said it is entitled uh, the word the, the the critic and the text here he is uh, he is talking about the difference between uh, certain terms included including the, the text uh, so i will here i in, in order to understand how to analyze uh, a literary work i i'm going to recommend two books two important books the first one is that terry eagleton's how to read literature and the second one is that one by m h e brams the mirror and the lamp now terry eagleton's how to read literature uh, in fact in this book terry eagleton differentiates between two two elements uh, in reading uh, literature. He, he elaborates on the macro elements and the micro elements. Now, macro elements, this is something related to the plot, the character, to the setting, to the point of view, to the genre, to the literary devices, to the structure. But when we talk about micro element, this is something related to the theme. This is something related to the discourse, to the ideology. In relation to the plot, to the character, to the setting, to the point of view, to the genre, to the literary devices, to the structure, blah, 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 all these things. So it is something uh, just not uh, similar to what, uh, what uh, Hemingway uh, says about Stan Hamid. استاذ محمد هسه تمام تمام عيني تمام اوكي okay. uh, اذا let us go back to uh, let us go back to our um, uh, just a minute the macro elements and the micro elements now when we talk about the macro elements we are referring to a very important question that is how that is the form, 
the plot, the character, the setting, the point of view, the genre, the literary devices, the structure. Now, when we talk about micro elements, we are talking about something related to two important questions we have to come across when we analyze any literary work, that is what and why. So, we have to keep in mind when we analyze any literary work, three main questions that are how, what, and why. Okay. Now, let me go back to the another important book uh, that is by M. H. Abrams, The Mirror and the Lab. First of all, I would like to explain the reason behind the title of, of this particular book, The Mirror and the Lab. In the book, Abrams speaks about the two ways in which literature or literary theories try to interpret the human mind. First, the mind as a mirror that reflects the external objects, and the second as a lamp that throws light at the object it sees. The first approach is related to the mimetic theories of a criticism, and the second approach is related to the romantic ideal of the power of the mind to interpret what it sees. In this essay, Abraham speaks about how different critical theories tend to display the orientation towards a particular element of the work of art by dividing these theories based upon their orientation. So, in this book, he wants to talk about the, the, the elements, uh, the coordinates by which we interpret any literary text. Let me show you. Coordinates of literary criticism uh, in, in M.H. M, in M. Abrams, The Mirror and the Lab. We have, first of all, the work of art. Look, let us call it, let it, let it be a, a, a novel, a play, a poem. Then we have the artist who produced this work of art. Then we have the universe. Then we have the audience. Now let me explain every, every single word or every single term. Now the work of art. What sometimes I focus upon the work of regardless the author, regardless the background, regardless the age, regardless uh, many things related to upload or let us say outside forces. So here I am talking about textual analysis, what we call textual analysis. It means I am going to analyze the work without any information, without having any information about uh, the writer, the background, the, the things, other things, other external forces related to, to, to the text, to, to, related to the text, outside forces. Now the artist. Of course, if we have a work of art, it is produced by certain artists. So, in this case, I have to ask myself, to what extent this work of art is influenced by the life of the author? Sometimes, or let me give you an example, when we talk about D.H. Lawrence's Sons and Lovers. Now, we know very well that Sons and Lovers is a reflection of the artist's life. Who is the artist in this case? He is D.H. Lawrence, of course. And we have many other works, whether a play or, or poems, we have, they are a reflection, they are reflections of what, of the life of their authors. Now we talk about, let us go to the, to the universe. Now, what do we mean by the, the universe? Sometimes the, the work of art is influenced by the backdrop or the, by the background of certain age. Sometimes we know that that uh, we have many literary ages and certain many work of many works of art uh, reflected the literary age. Mm -hmm. So we call the backdrop. Sometimes we say that this work uh, was written on the backdrop of certain events. Let that let, it could be the the it could be war, it could be Victorian age, Renaissance, or any other back background. Okay, uh, the audience. Mm -hmm. To what extent this work is going to affect the audience? Sometimes, especially when we talk about uh, or when we read certain literary works, these literary works 
have what have therapeutic effect. Uh, they are produced to heal, to heal certain audience, certain audience who are suffering from certain, uh, certain. They are suffering from from certain, certain, uh, certain disease, certain inner, certain um, uh, wound. So in this case, we are going to address particular audience. We are, or sometimes it is not. It is, this text uh, is not written for the purpose of uh, of uh, uh, of healing certain audience. No, it is written for the purpose of uh, teaching them certain didactic lesson. So this is the way uh, by which uh, this is what 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 uh, M H Ibrams means by these four coordinates. Now. Let us go to the orientation of a critical theories according to Ibrahims. By the way, when I talk about all these things, I am trying to enlighten your mind with certain things you have to think about when you analyze any literary work. Yani, for example, when you when you when you when you find yourself in front of a work of art, you have to think of this work. Uh, regardless any other elements and sometimes you have to think of this work with with reference to to its author yeah and you have to think whether this book whether this this novel whether this poem whether this play has any what biographical elements whether this book whether this text or whether sorry whether this literary work has any biographical uh, elements this is what do we mean by the artist. Another important thing, when we talk about the universe, you have to ask yourself whether uh, this, uh, whether this, this literary work uh, derived its sources from uh, our social life, our ordinary life, or maybe it is addressing the whole universe by means of a presenting certain message Uh, that 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 has to be delivered to to the whole universe. Or sometimes when we talk about the audience, we have to think about the audience. Whether this text uh, is written for for entertainment only, or it has a didactic purposes or therapeutic purposes. And here, by the way, I want to remind you of the term catharsis. You remember when when Aristotle uh, talks about the cathartic effect of the text. Now, by, by, when he talks about the cathartic effect, he is addressing the audience. The way this text, the way this, this literary work of art has the ability to purgate the soul of, of the audience, and this is the cathartic effect. Now, mimetic, pragmatic, expressive, objective. Mimetic. Let me explain this. One of the orientations of the critical theories, according to Abrams, is mimetic. What does this mean? Whether the story, whether the plot of this play, whether the topic or the subject matter of, of this poem is derived from real life. Sometimes it is not derived from real life, it is derived from other literary sources. And here we are talking about what? We are talking about the theory of intertextuality. When, when the author borrows certain, when an author borrows certain element, certain plot, certain character, certain theme, any literary element from Previous text, and he imitates what is already said by others, but he adds, he tries to add. So, in this case, we are dealing with something that is related to what? To biography, autobiography, intertextuality. Now, pragmatic. Sometimes when we read a text, and this text is what is an allegory. For example, when we read Animal Farm, when we read The Old Man and the Sea, we have many sources 
that which said that these two works are what? Are allegorical works. So when we say pragmatic, it means that these allegorical works have didactic purposes. They want to teach the audience or the readers something about life. So when we say pragmatic, in other words, it have, or they have, sorry, these works, they have didactic purposes. Pragmatic means that, that didactic purposes. Expressive. Here we are talking about something related to psychoanalysis. When we talk about psychological realism all the time, we are dealing with what? We are dealing with, for example, certain techniques that, uh, that reflect, that reflect the, the psychological realism. For example, we deal with first point of view, uh, stream of consciousness technique, uh, inner conflict, internal conflict. Uh, we are dealing with something related to man, to the conflict between man and himself. Uh, so this is expressive. So psychological uh, theories, this is what we mean by expressive. Now, objective, we are dealing with the text as a text. We are dealing with the literary work as a literary work, regardless other 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 things. Regardless other things, we are trying to present an objective interpretation of the text, regardless the background of the author, regardless the background of the age, regardless many other external forces. So this is what uh, Ibrams uh, means by the orientations of a critical theories. حضور الصوت واضح بلا زحمة تمام Now uh, I'm going to give an example or how to read or, or how to analyze a fictional work First of all, which is more important is how to uh, we have to read the text we have to uh, read the text this is very important. We have to read the poem. We have to read the play. We have to read the novel. It is very important. The first step, we have to read. We have to read the literary work. Then, we have to identify the story's setting. Why? Because this provides us with the backdrop for the actions, the interactions of the character, the conflict, and which can influence the plots. Now, the interaction of the characters, in other words, the conflict among the characters, can influence what? Influence the plots and the story's overall message. So, in this sense, I am dealing with what? I am dealing with the question of what? What is the background? What is the conflict? What is the structure of the plot? What is the theme? Let me explain this or let me give you uh, a very good example concerning the structure of the plot. Sometimes or usually we are dealing with a chronological order of a plot, resolution of, a, of an action, uh, climax, anticlimax, etc. But sometimes we have or we can see that the structure of the plot is what is a fragmented. It does not follow this chronological order. So here we are talking about what we are talking about, a form. The form of this plot is a fragmented. We have to ask ourselves, why? Now, why this is something related to the subject matter that this literary work tries to reflect. Okay, another step, answering how. This how implies how does the author weave the above elements. We are talking about a whole texture, the siege coming. In the siege of the man, background, conflict, structure, plot, characters, uh, the language, etc. Now, so 
the 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 uh, we have to know as a researcher as researchers we have to know the way or how does the author weave all these things together. Now, answering the question of why, why does the author weave the above elements? So, first of all, we have to decide what. What is the setting? What are the characters? What is the plot? What is the conflict? What is the theme? The second question, how? How does the author weave all these elements together? And the, second, the third thing we have to ask about is why? For what purpose? Because if we are going to answer this why, we are going to get the answer of the discourse. For example, when we deal with animal farm, now we know what is the, the genre of, of, of this uh, novella, we know what kind of conflict, we know who are the characters, what kind of characters do we have, uh, what is the language, what is the, 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 uh, the point of view, all these elements, we know what are they. Now the second question we are going to ask ourselves, how does the author weave all these elements together? The most important question is why? What does he want to say? Why? If he is trying to say all these things, he is trying to say what? He is trying why? We have to ask ourselves these questions. What, how, and why? Now, another important thing when we are going to decide what and how, and why we have the, the fourth step to identify key passages. For example, in, in animal form, I want to I I identified the, the discourse. Uh, we have a class struggle, we have power relation, we have many other things related to the differences among social classes or the corruption of capitalist regime, etc. So I have to identify certain passages, certain extract that serve the message I want to focus upon. For example, if I am talking about uh, the Marxism or cultural materialism or dialectical materialism or binary oppositions, let us focus upon binary opposition, the conflict between uh, the self and the other. I have to choose certain quotations that serve my idea. The conflict between the self and the other, I have to choose certain, uh, certain quotations that are going to be useful for my analysis. At the same time, this is the, 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 the extracts. These are the extracts from, from the, the literary work. I have at the same time to choose another kind of extract. Extracts or quotations or paragraphs from where? From the literary theory I adopt. Of course, when I'm going to analyze any literary work, I cannot exclude the literary work. If I am an MA student, I have, and if I'm writing my thesis or my dissertation, I have to focus upon certain literary theory. So if I'm going to focus upon certain literary theory, also I have to be selective. Yeah, and if I, am, if I am talking about Marxism or post-colonialism, I can't talk about Marxism or about post-colonialism from A to Z. No, I have to be selective. So if I'm going to be selective, I have to select also from the literary work certain quotations that go alongside the critical perspectives that I adopted. Okay? Uh, presenting the analysis and supporting the argument. Presentation and the analysis, presentation of the analysis and elaboration on the argumentative framework should be supported with evidences from the text and from the adopted theory. This includes direct quotation, descriptions of, of uh, events or characters, action, references to literary and linguistic techniques. 
what does this mean? Sometimes I am going to focus upon military devices. Yet yeah, sometimes I am saying that there is uh, a kind of, uh, or let me say, I am uh, this this uh, this novel talks about carriage. So of course I have to have certain symbol, certain literary device that reflects this uh, this this theme. And another thing, linguistic device. What do I mean by linguistic techniques? Of course, what do, what do I have? Or let me focus upon the grammatical techniques. Sometimes we have certain uh, thing with the grammatical structure. Yeah, for, for example, when I read uh, the, the novels of Toni Morrison, I can see that there is uh, some the the the, uh, the grammatical uh, structure is not that uh, of standard English. So at the very beginning, maybe I am going to think that there is a kind of a printing mistake. In fact, it is not a printing mistake. It is part of the African American identity. This is the way they use English. So by means of working or uh, or changing the grammatical structure they want to say that this is our identity this is the way we are using english so this is part of the way we can uh, manipulate language for the purpose for our purposes to reflect our uh, our power to reflect our ability to to use language so when we are going to take certain quotations from literary theory, from the literary work, we have to ensure that each claim is connected to the evidence provided, accurately and responsibly interpreted, relevant to your overall analysis. Now, uh, I'm, I, I tried to choose famous extracts from canonical works, and I am going to uh, attract your attention to certain things in these quotations. Now, the first quotation is from The Animal Farm by George Orwell. Man is the only real enemy we have. Remove man from the scene and the root cause of hunger and overwork is abolished for forever. And these two lies, in fact, I have more than one theme. First of all, I can say that I have the theme of solidarity. How can I prove this? From this pronoun, we. We. This is a kind of solidarity. When I say we, it means what? It means there is a kind of solidarity. Now, man is the only real enemy we have. So we have we and we have man and we have this word enemy. It means what? It means we have binary oppositions. We have binary opposition. We have the self, the conflict between the self versus the other. Now, man here in this quotation, he is the other. They are the self because they are the speakers. يعني لو كان المان in this quotation, the speaker, now man is going to be the self with capital letter S and the animals are going to be the other. Like in here, in this quotation, the speaker is uh, the speaker is the animals themselves. So here we have uh, the conflict between two binary oppositions, and the animals here they are the self, not the other. Remove man from the scene and the root cause of hunger. The root cause of hunger. Now this word hunger may indicate what. Poverty. And since we have poverty, we have what? We have class difference, class distinction. We have what? We have rich people and we have poor people. We have proletariat and we have bourgeois. So try to look at the surface meaning and the deep meaning. Try to examine every word you read in the literary work. Don't ignore any word, any word, and sometimes you cannot discover many things from first reading. You need more than one reading. Let us have a look at a second paragraph or a second quotation. He looked across the sea and knew. He looked across the sea and 
knew how alone he was now, but he could see the prisms in the deep dark water and the lines stretching ahead and the strange uh, undulation of the calm. The clouds were building up now for the trade wind and he looked ahead and so flight of wild duck etching themselves against the sky over the water, then blurring, then etching again, and he knew no man was ever alone on the sea. Here, I want to reflect, or I want to start with this particular verb. He looked across. Now, when we look at something, we need what? We need longer time than what? Sometimes we we, uh, we we use see and look. There is a big difference between uh, in duration of time between see and look. When we look at something, we we have to look at this something with with certain uh, with certain duration of time. That's why if we are going to examine the sentences here, we are going to find they are full of details and they are uh, long sentences. Another quotation, I declare after all there is no enjoyment like reading. How much sooner one tries of anything than of a book. When I have a house of my own, I shall be miserable if I have not uh, an excellent library. Now, this quotation is from where? From Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Here, I want to remind you of very important thing that is said by Abrams. What is this important thing? Let me go back to Abrams to remind you. Now, Abrams talked about what? Talked about the artist. If I want to analyze this quotation with reference to the life of Jane Austen, I can see how Jane Austen is clearly recognized in this quotation. Why? Because Jane Austen spent, uh, spent a lot of her, of her life reading and she was educated at the hand of private tutors. So reading uh, and the library is part of her life. So I can recognize autobiographical element in this quotation. So here I can link this with certain uh, references or certain sources related to the life of, of the author. Do you understand? And sometimes uh, many novelists, many researchers, many students write the, the biography or uh, the, the life, the life sketch of certain yeah. author. So imagine that you are writing about Jane Austen. You can use this particular quotation to, uh, for the purpose of what? For the purpose of linking it with the life of Jane Austen herself. This is almost all what I want to say uh, today. And tomorrow, of course, we are going to elaborate on more practical, uh, more practical uh, examples from poetry and from drama, inshallah. Thank you very much. Let me see if we if we have Dr. Arwa with us to present the second part. Uh, the second part of this lecture. If she is not with us, we are going to. Uh, I'm going to receive uh, your your questions. Stad Muhammad, Dr. Arwa, can you hear me? Am I correct? I think it's not present. فإذا إذا أكو أسئلة خلينا نشوف الأسئلة اللي موجودة ما موجودة إذا رح نشوف الأسئلة اللي موجودة تمام 
Exactement. Uh, هو ده بوا هذا بوا على الشات إن أكو تعليق إن أنا إن in the Lord of the Flies the shell was a representation of leadership if I remember correctly yes it is a representation of leadership the one who has uh, the shell has the right to speak uh, in fact. Uh, sometimes when we interpret literature, my interpretation is going to be different from your interpretation, and this is not uh, wrong, of course, because when we talk about literature, we are, we are talking about relative truth rather than abstract truth. So uh, you can say, yeah. يعني لحد الآن أنا ما أشوف أسئلة. السلام عليكم شكرا استاذ عليكم السلام انا الاستاذ مصطفى بخير صوتي مسموع Uh, doctor, uh, my question is, why don't we use our identity like African-American in pronunciation, the words and deals? Why always they are seeing be native? Uh, no, of course, we, we use our, uh, our own culture uh, nowadays in Anglophone literature. For example, if you, uh, if you are familiar with Anglophone literature or literature of hyphenated identity, You are going to see many words that are, in fact, they are Arabic, but they are written by means of using uh, English uh, English uh, letters. Uh, and this is part of our identity. This is part of uh, the way we are trying to reflect on our, our culture. I remember one of my students, he, uh, he wrote... Uh, A study about Diana Abu Jabr, the language of Baglava, and she uses many Arabic words that are written in English. They are Arabic, but they are written by means of using certain, uh, by means of using English words, so uh, English letters, sorry. So this is part of the way we are trying to reflect on our identity. Uh, doctor, you mean uh, multiculturalism like uh, Arab American? writers Arab when American they translate the word. Anglophone literature, yeah, Anglophone mm -hmm. literature or Arab American literature, uh, literature of hyphenated identity. Uh, this is, we, we try to use in Arab American literature, we try to use to reflect on our identity and our, our own language, our own culture. By the way, we have, for example, Muhdaqah, uh, Uh, she tries all the time to use the, the letter kha 
in, uh, in many of her works, and we know very well that this letter uh, exists in, in Arabic language only. So this is part of uh, part of what we call it writing back the, the colonial uh, discourse. We are going to use your language, but according to our own identity. That's why she has a very famous character in one of her uh, novels. Her name is Khadra. Khadra in particular. Khadra. Why Khadra? Because Khadra, harf al لا يوجد في اللغة الإنجليزية. Thank you, doctor. With a pleasure, مصطفى. Yeah, خضرة. Yeah, you are right, Wade. You are right. More questions, please. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum, Doctor. Thank you very much for this nice and At the same time, I'd like to actually uh, encourage you to go on in such uh, classes, which seems to be very beneficial uh, for the students to develop their level and understand the, the devices and the tools in analyzing yeah. the literary text and how to deal with the literary theory and apply, and apply it for, for the, the, the works they, they study. Actually, it seems that I attended late and uh, um, uh, I don't know exactly what was about the, the class. I think uh, the class was about the literary theory and how can we apply it on the literary text, Victor? Uh, it was about, uh, first of all, we elaborated on the difference between the literary theory, literary criticism, and what do you mean by the text. And then I tried to elaborate on uh, Terry Eagleton's book, How to Read Literature, and then M. H. Ibram's The Mirror and the Lamp, which is a very important book, and how can we link it with the literary analysis. Then we elaborated and discussed the most important steps uh, where we are going to start uh, the analysis, the, the interpretation, and what are the most important procedures that we have to follow when we analyze uh, any literary, uh, literary work. And then I try to uh, elaborate on certain codes, famous codes of chemical works, and what are the most important things that we can get from certain quotations by means of linking the content with the form. Uh, actually, this is something very great. Uh, I, I see that the literary students find difficulty when he or she comes to apply the literary theory exactly how, uh, on the literary text. And uh, yeah, it seems that right. we'll try to solve this uh, seems everlasting problem for the lit literary students. Actually, this is you know, the exact procedures that the students should follow in order to be able to analyze any text in a correct way. That's very Victoria. I and mean, actually, Thank I you. wish I could prepare a yeah. content or a, some a, a material to to take part in this conference. But inshallah, in the next inshallah, time, inshallah. I, will be, yeah. I will take part in this and. I'd like to say hello to you and uh, at the same time to hail you for your uh, you. effort. Thank you very much Thank and you. wish you all success and a well being. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Lina. Lina, she, uh, she is asking Do you think anyone can learn about the art of the criticism if they simply read more, aside from those? with a pure talent and topic, of course. You have to have talent, you have to be genius, and to, you have to read more. You have to read more about the three that you are going to adopt. And if you are analyzing any literary work by means of Marxism, you have to read more about Marxism. And you have uh, also to balance when you uh, analyze any literary work, you have to balance between the uh, between criticism and literary theory, criticism, as we have said, this is the way of the way you interpret, you judge, you criticize. 
but literary theory, this is the certain rules, certain aspects, certain concepts you take from uh, this field of knowledge in order to prove your, your argument. Of course, you have to read more and you have to practice more. And it is not uh, only a matter of, of knowledge sometimes, and many people, many students, they have the knowledge, but they do not know how to put it on, on the paper. So they have, and sometimes, the مشكلة اللي عاني منها أكثر الطلاب عن شخصين اللي أشرف عليهم واللي ما أشرف عليهم إنه المعلومة تكون بعقلة موجودة لكن المشكلة إنه كآلية وضعها على الورق فالموضوع هنا مو بس معرفة الموضوع هنا أيضا موهبة موهبة باحث وذكاء باحث وتدريب تدريب يعني انه يميثل ولهذا كثير من الطلاب من يبلش يكتب الفصل الاول بالرساله يحس نفسه مقيد من يكتب الفصل الثاني يحس نفسه انه لا اصبحت عنده مرونه اكثر بالكتابه وكذلك بالفصل الثالث زادت المرونه وزادت القابليه فاذا الموضوع كله معتمد على انه شلون يفترض تتعامل مع الموازنه بين النظريه والتطبيق إضافة إلى التدريب المستمر على الكتابة، التدريب المستمر على الكتابة، ولهذا نصيحة لكل الطلاب اللي هم في مرحلة الكتابة، أي يوم لا تفوته وإنه أنت ما كاتب، عسى لو تكتب سطر، سطر هو يكون مجرد نوت، مو إلا مجرد هذا السطر الحين كتب داخل الرسالة أو الأطروحة، بس اكتب سطر أو اقرأ على الأقل أحيانا وأنا مريت بيها ودائما أقول لطلابي يصير عندي حالة من النزاع حتى مجرد ما اطلع ببارجراف واحد بارجراف اظل مدة اسبوع افتر على نفسي حتى دا يطلع هذا البارجراف لانه احيانا اللغة مدى تنصقل الفكرة مدى تنصقل فتكون المعلومة حاضرة الفكرة حاضرة لكن اكو امور اخرى فهي بالممارسة هي بالممارسة بالتدريب بالدراسة المستفيضة الى ان نصبح يعني احنا دا نعد اللي دا يكتبون الرسائل دا نعد اشخاص يكونون سكولرز يعني احنا اساتذتكم وفق تصانيف الاكاديمية احنا هسه كريتكس عفوا يو ار يو ار يو ار كريتكس احنا اللي اعلى منكم سكولرز اوكي فانتم في هذه الحالة محتاجين الكل تدريب محتاجين قراءة مستفيضة اضافة الى ذكاء الباحث اللي ما يجي بيوم ويومين اوكي uh, good evening, Doctor. Uh, I would like to take a moment to appreciate your efforts in presenting this workshop. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me as a, a student in literature and for my other colleagues here who are attending. Uh, yeah. Victoria, uh, my question is, like based on a uh, Russian formalist's attempt to, in conceiving yeah. literature, they have propounded yeah. the idea that, especially Viktor Shklovsky in his article, yeah. Art as Technique, uh, mm -hmm. he proposed the idea that we should like uh, rehabilitate our uh, our conception of literature uh, of literary works, like because of habitualization, you know, it consumes the artistry of works. Mm -hmm. So that's why he like suggested the notion of defamiliarization. Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, Victoria, uh, how would you reflect upon the idea of conceiving the reader uh, as the, the, uh, the big brother in George Orwell's 1984? Because, you know, uh, in, in postmodernist uh, post philosophy and uh, criticism, uh, mm -hmm. there is a philosopher called Slavoj Žižek. He's a psychiatrist mm -hmm. as well. Uh, who mm -hmm. suggests that, like, uh, uh, by necessity, there must be a big other who is watching and monitoring us. His observation mm -hmm. was regarding the human nature, because he's a psychiatrist and a philosopher, of course. Mm -hmm. But, like, mm -hmm. if we want to take this framework and apply it on George Orwell's 1984, with, like, keeping in mind the, the poetics of Russian formalist criticism, how would you reflect upon this idea? Thank you. In fact, I'm not sure uh, I uh, fully comprehend your your question, but concerning the, the readers, uh, let me let me answer the, the first part. And how can we deal 
with the reader or can we consider the reader as the big brother who are watching the, the novelist? You mean this? Exactly. No, Victor, not the novelist, but like the characters, you know, like because it's a control. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a controlled society. Everything is monitored. So like, how would you reflect upon this idea? So you, the are, reader you, are, talking about, the brother. you are talking about, I think, the, the sympathetic and the empathetic relationship between the reader and the character, right? Uh, well, Victor, I want to hear your opinion about this idea. Okay. Uh, okay. You tell me okay. what you okay. think. Here, I, I want to take you back to to this. Uh, let me see. Yeah, to the the audience. Now, this is one of the coordinates. This is one of the coordinates that uh, M. H. Abrams talked talked about in his book, the audience. Now, where do we place the audience in relation to the work of art? The way this audience are influenced by this work of art. In this case, maybe we have we are going to uh, find the way certain reader is going to identify himself with certain character. But there is a kind of call and response between the character and certain reader. So here we are going to uh, establish a kind of sympathetic and empathetic relationship between the character and certain reader. Yeah, a certain reader is going to find himself a certain character. Uh, this is, okay, so he is going to appeal. This reader is going to appeal to this character. Sometimes this character, or maybe we have a couple of characters who are going to work to diagnose certain problem, a certain society, and we ourselves as Mithran, as Iraqi people, or maybe as individual person, I suffer from the same problem in my society. So here we are talking about uh, on the level of uh, uh, community on the level of uh, collective experience, not individual experience. This is the, the first part of, of your question. Now, you talked about Shukmarski technique of discovery, right? You talked yeah, about yes, his, his, famous, his famous technique of discovery, and he talked about two kinds of technique, adequate and inadequate. Technique, and he talks about the technique of defamiliarization. So sometimes, yeah. uh, when we talk about a drama, now you know that uh, in, uh, in in uh, in a traditional drama we have the fourth wall. There is no relationship between the the audience and the character. Yeah, I mean, the characters they do not try to address the audience directly. Now with experimental techniques of modern drama, we have what? We have the removal of the fourth wall and we have a direct, sometimes a direct conversation between the characters and the, the audience. So this is a kind of defamiliarization that is going to be suitable to the problems of, of modern age. For example, يطلع واحد بالمسرحية يقول يا سادة يا كرام هو الراوي هو الراوي بالمسرحية بالمسرح الكلاسيكي بدل الراوي ما عندنا راوي عندنا الكورس لكن هذا نعتبره مسرح حديث فدا يجي أكو يشيء عنصر الفورث وول فدا يصير رموضل of the fourth wall سواء مخاطبة مباشرة للأودينس so this is uh, this is Bertolt Brecht's epic theater. Theater, by the way, the epic theater, that's a technique of alienation. Technique of alienation. The alienation method. It's all experimental. The technique of alienation. You have placards, you have spotlights, you have songs. What is the goal of it? The goal is to make a deviation. من التراديشنال دراما بالتراديشنال دراما اللي حكى بيها ارسطوتل انت عندك كثارتك افكت لكن هنا بالمودرن دراما ان اوردر تو شوك ذا اودينس اور تو ميك ذا اودينس ريمبر ذات ايفريثينج ان فرونت اوف ذيم از نوثينج بت ا بيرفورمنس 
They have to think about what is going on. They have to respond intellectually, not emotionally. يعني هنا ما يكون أكو كثارتك إفكت يكون يريد يكون أكو intellectual response. فهذه هي أيضا فهذا كل شكل بس كي قال عن هذه familiarization بالمودن 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 age أصبح يسمى ال 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 experimental technique واللي يشمل ضمن ال absurd theater والتكنيك of alienation. واللي يدخل من ضمنه ايضا اللي اللي حكى به السيستم اللي حكى به ابو ماجيك ايماجن اف نسيت استاذ دافسكي يعني هواي تقنيات مسرحيه اضافه الى انه اكو تقنيات شعريه الابسز بالتقنيات الشعريه او موضوع الفيجواليزيشن هواي تقنيات شعريه ظهرت وكذلك تقنيات روائيه كلها هذه نسميها اكسبرمنتال تكنيك، إذا أريد أرجعها للشيء اللي حكى به شكلوفسكي تطلع دي فاميليارايزيشن خروج عن المألوف. ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور يور أنسر دكتورة أند لايك وي هاف ذا أونر تو أتند ون أوف يور ورك شوبس. ثانك يو فيري ماتش. ثانك يو فيري ماتش. إت إز أن أونر فور مي. ثانك يو فيري ماتش. أسئلة أخرى؟ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. عليكم السلام أنا أستاذ شاكر. Thank you for all the attendees and for Dr. Afu for this lecture. And I want to ask Dr. Afu if you can re-mention the title of book for Edward Said. The the word the the artist I will check. Well, the 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 word the the word the word with a word. And the artist, I'm going to check it. I have to check it. But it's about this title, the Edward Said. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to check it. Thank you very much, Doctor. With a pleasure. With a pleasure. Good morning, Doctor. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good evening. Fine. How are you, Shahed? I said good morning. Sorry, this is because of stress. I'm so stressed now. You know, a cycle. Don't worry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that, Doctor. I just have a question about sexuality and the relationship between form and content. Yeah. And now, when you named Doctor Muhammad, I know and respect. Okay, but my question is, the author can rewrite something, but what does not have the main the main message of the blood is to read the same. Okay, so what does this mean? Sir Shahad, will you please repeat your question? I cannot get the idea. So can they cut that? Doctor, the author. Rewrite yeah. uh, a certain famous work, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, uh, the message of the work uh, is the same, remains. But he changed the form and the content. Uh, yeah, he, you mean uh, there is a deviation in the form on the, and the content, and still the message is the same message. Yes, this is my question. Uh, here, it is not, if we are going to go back to Harold Bloom, it is not a negative imitation because he adds something. He adds a new form. He adds a new content. And by the way, you are saying the same message. But when we talk about the content, uh, the content is, is the theme. It is the discourse. It is the text inside the, the literary work. So, hey. Yeah. Victoria Arwa. Come on. Uh, 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 in this situation, we do not have negative imitation. يعني هنا إذا نرجع على اللي قالنا إياها إبرامز إبرامز إيش قالش بالكووردينيتورز 
قال انه احنا عندنا من الكووردينيتورز هي قال الميميتك الميميتك بهاي الحاله انه هل هي بيورلي بيور ايميتيشن ويزاوت اني اد ويزاوت ويزاوت اني اديشن لا هنا انت تقولين هو اكو اضافه بالتكنيك ففي هذه الحاله راح نجي انه السؤال هي بما انه هي ليست مجرد تقليد فاذا كان اكو هدف من اعاده كتابه هذا النص، هذا يعتمد الموضوع It depends upon your reading whether this text, this new text is a writing bag to the original one or it could be what? It could be uh, a kind of a placing certain certain uh, fictional elements or certain literary elements in a new context. تذكرون من شنو اقول لكم على ماري yeah. شيلي واحمد سعداوي هي بروز ذا 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 سيم كاركتر لكن هي بليسز ذا سيم كاركتر ان ا نيو كونتكست ذات از ذا تروما اوف ايراك ان ذا افتر باث اوف 2003 mm. بهاي ات ديبندز ابون يور اون ريدينج يو يو ايدنتيفايد ذا وات اند ذا هاو But still, you have to answer the question of why. And why depends upon your own reading. And I cannot answer your question randomly and by means of using generalization. No, I have to read the text in this case. If you're asking me about a particular text, for example, if I'm going to, you are asking me about uh, Robinson Crusoe and Fu by by Kudzia, I'm going to say it is a writing bag. If you are asking me about the relationship between the Tempest and Margaret Atwood Hackseed, I am going to say it is a writing bag from a feminist perspective. If you are asking me about, uh, for example, uh, what you call Jane Eyre and the White Sargasso Sea, once again, it is a writing bag from a post-colonial perspective. If you are asking me about Ahmed Sardawi and Mary Shelley Frankish Day, Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it is intertextuality by means of very certain things to put it in a new context. But it is not a passive imitation. Could have more passive imitation. Could have more passive imitation. I will act as positive imitation. They are adding something new. So it depends upon your own reading. And you have to decide why. Especially when there is a relationship between two texts. You have to decide why. Okay, yeah, that's right. For example, if we, go, if we go to the Lord of the Flies. Now, Lord of the Flies was written by means of depending upon certain certain sources. One of the high sources كانت في القصة اسمها كارول أو something. You know, أيضا عن أولاد هم وجدوا نفسهم في في جزيرة. لكن كان الهدف مو مجرد الاستعارة. وإنما كان الهدف مجرد إنه مو مجرد التقليد وإلا راح يطلع بلاجيرزم كان الهدف من عنده إنه to uh, to tackle the philosophical question uh, the the question of uh, the evil side in in uh, in man's uh, nature do we acquire evil by nature or by nurture مثلا إذا تسأليني عن شكسبير شكسبير لما إنه استعار هو نفس الثيمة نفس الأفكار لكن he adds to the original text to the original literary work by means of language فهو أكو addition هو ما قلد حرفيا شكسبير هو أخذ الثيمة أخذ القصة صحيح لكن هو قدم شيء جديد باختيار اللغة اللغة جديدة نوعية اللغة المقدمة فإذا هو ضمن الحدود المسموحة ما كان تقليد أعمى فبالتالي إذا تقليد أعمى هو بلاجيرزم Yeah. أتمنى أكون جاوبت سؤالك. Yes, doctor, I got you. Thank you. My pleasure. السلام عليكم عليكم السلام السلام عليكم آه عليكم السلام بس قبل ما تدخل الدكتورة صحيح هنا ذكروني بالعنوان الكتاب إدوارد سعيد The Word, The Text and The Critic شكرا جزيلا لتذكيري نعم تفضلي دكتورة أروى أهلا وسهلا 
شكرا جزيلا دكتورة for your valuable remarks. I would just like to comment on one question raised by one of the guests. Uh, I, sorry, I forgot the name concerning the the uh, image of the or the character of the uh, big brother. Uh, I couldn't actually catch all the question, but what I understood that the idea or the interpretation of the big brother has been analyzed according to uh, a psychologist uh, analyst. Uh, and this is actually, and he asked you, uh, how do you, how do you uh, reflect on this character or you personally? Uh, I would like to say that this goes with the uh, critical viewpoint, uh, or actually, uh, which, is, which became uh, uh, flourished in the, uh, uh, the post-structuralist school or deconstruction school that uh, one text produces uh, hundreds of texts or that one concept can be interpreted uh, or given uh, multi-layered meanings. So accordingly, this is how we uh, react to the character of the big brother. Maybe another uh, we can say is see this character from the other side, not as a passive or a negative character or some harmful character to the society, but if we see it as a monitor uh, to we, yeah, if we say that the big brother is there, inside us, inside each one of us, there is a big brother monitoring us. Uh, checking out our uh, faults, uh, preventing us from uh, committing mistakes, then this would be a, a positive reaction to this character or a positive interpretation, uh, interpretation to this character. And this shows that literature, there is nothing called uh, incorrect in literature because in literature, and this is actually the uh, creativity of literature and in, in, in the study of literature. Uh, literature, everything in literature can be true. It depends on what argument you make and how you are able to defend your argument according to a, spe a specific uh, theory framework and defending your uh, critical viewpoints by uh, connect connecting between this theory framework and uh, the textual analysis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Anwa, and I think your your uh, your remarks are are related to a question that is uh, asked by Sermat Majid. Uh, he asked about whether we can apply multiple theories upon one selected work. Yeah, of course, we can do it. We can apply uh, upon one work many different, uh, many different literary or cultural theories. It depends upon. Uh, another important uh, question, confessional literature, psychoanalytic literary analysis, autobiography. These are related terms. Can you elaborate? When we talk about confessional literature, we are talking about something related to the internal conflict. Uh, man versus himself. He is trying to confess to himself. That's why, for example, when we read the, uh, the famous poem written by uh, Sylvia Plath, Daddy, uh, we, it is categorized under the umbrella of confessional literature or confessional poetry. When we read uh, also for Edgar Allan Poe, The Black Cat, uh, he uses the pronoun uh, I, or the first person narration, I, uh, to confess. And he says this uh, openly in, in this literary work in particular, I want to unburden my soul. I want to remove the burden from my soul. That's why I'm talking. So it is part of the internal conflict. When we talk about internal conflict, we are talking about something related to psychoanalytic literary criticism. Uh, autobiography, uh, not all the time autobiography is related to psychoanalysis, it is related to the artist himself, whether he wants to talk about himself in a form of confession or he wants to talk about uh, the, the way he uh, struggles against external forces, not internal forces. So it depends, it depends upon the, the literary work uh, itself. 
I think uh, almost uh, these are the, uh, the questions that I have between my hand for today. إذا أكو أي أحد رافع إيده أستاذ محمد لأنه ما يظهر أمامي ممكن أن نجاوب أنا أو دكتورة أروى I have a question for Dr. Alpha. How can we be selective while analyzing a literary text and choosing codes that serve our purposes? Uh, uh, Fatma, for example, when you analyze a literary work and you are going to apply theory of feminism uh, upon, upon this literary work, you have to concentrate upon certain concepts that you find in this literary text. Uh, for example, when you analyze, let me talk about once again about Lord of the Flies, because I guess many students are familiar with, uh, you are talking about the, the struggle between two different classes. So since we have a struggle between different classes, we have power relations. So you have to focus upon certain quotations that reflect uh, this, this struggle. Uh, when one is stronger than the other, so he uses certain kind of words, certain kind of phrases, certain kinds of expressions to reflect on his power. So once again, it depends upon your own reading. It depends upon your own reading. You have to read more. You have to dig deeply inside the text in order to discover uh, its jewels. يعني أحيانا تمرين على نصوص النص عبارة عن أرض منبسطة كل شيء ما كبي وأحيانا فأنت مضطرة تقرأين قراءة أولى قراءة ثانية وتحفرين خلاص من النص أحيانا ما يحتاج النص واضح مثل أني منفان الجانرة مالته واضحة واستخدم الكاتب كتاب فيري تيل مع العلم إنه هي النوفيلا هي ليست بفيري تيل فرح نسأل السؤال ليش كتاب فيري تيل الصراع هذا هل هو أليغوريكال آه إلى آخره من الأسئلة الكثيرة فهذا يعتمد على أنه أنت من أي زاوية تريدين تنظرين للنص دكتورة مها أعتقد أنها السؤال أستاذ محمد Good evening, doctor. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Maha. How are you? Doctor, uh, uh, fine, thank you. Uh, Dr. Maha Hindawi, uh, prof in Arabic uh, language, uh, especially in uh, and literature, especially novel. Um, and I, uh, I'm a student. I'm a student in uh, uh, evening uh, studies in uh, College of Arts uh, now. Um, Thanks a lot. Uh, excuse me. Uh, first, uh, thank you very much for your uh, lecture. Um, I appreciated uh, all your um, uh, information in this lecture. Uh, it's uh, very useful. Uh, please, would you please um, uh, present in another time um, a lecture about the politic novel? Politic novel. Uh, in uh, American literature and in uh, Engl uh, England literature, please, because I uh, um, I'm very interested uh, interesting with uh, this uh, kind of novel, uh, and I want to uh, make a contact uh, between uh, this kind of novel in uh, American and uh, England uh, literature with the um, Arabic literature, uh, Arabic novel uh, in this kind of literature. Uh, I mean, politic novel, please. Comparatively, yeah. I want to, uh, you want us to present something about comparative literature uh, regarding the. Uh, yeah, I have a big novel. question about uh, about the uh, elements and um, the 
uh, about the element uh, uh, of the uh, politic novel uh, in another literature, uh, England or, or American uh, literature, please. Yeah, and by the way, uh, when we talk about politics, pol we are surrounded by politics everywhere. Even in, inside our houses, we have politics. The relationship between the father, the mother, and the children. Uh, and one of uh, our guests mentioned uh, a very famous novel by George Orwell, 1984, and the Big Brothers. And there is a very famous concept tackled by Foucault that is surveillance. Uh, big brothers are watching you. Uh, there is another important kind of political novel or political literature which is related to prison literature. The way the, the um, I know it. Uh, excuse me, doctor. I know the uh, Sejun, but. Uh, I uh, especially mean uh, the uh, politic uh, novel, um, politic like novel, you mean the, after, after uh, September 11. Um, and, uh, 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 يعني, um, before or after it? Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, is there any um, is there any يعني, special kind of technique? when we write a political uh, novel uh, yeah. in American uh, literature, uh, for example? Is uh, there, uh, I, sure. and I want, I'm sure. yeah. I'm not sure. And I want to, uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, and I want to know what uh, the name of the uh, important and famous um, uh, writers and authors in uh, politic novel in American uh, literature, for example. Would you please um, give me some... Uh, uh, in fact, I'm not familiar with many political uh, novels because uh, nowadays when we talk about political novel, yani many American, many, many uh, novels in American literature or even in, in British literature, all the time they are talking about fundamentalism, terrorism, uh, the way uh, Islam is uh, a kind of uh, terrorist, uh, is a kind of terrorist force, etc. So I don't know whether we can consider it a kind of uh, political novel or political literature. Like, and after all, after all, I do believe that when you talk about politics, generally speaking, you are talking about power relation. And when you talk about power relation, you are talking about uh, Foucault. Foucault, uh, he is famously, uh, or he is famous for uh, this this particular concept, power relation. This struggle between the victimizer, the victimized, the perpetrator, the perpetrated, uh, etc. Uh, the struggle between the self and the other. Uh, power relation. You can find all the time this 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 uh, this concept when you read political novel. Like and concerning techniques, it depends upon the author himself. It depends upon the author. Yani each author yeah, yeah. has his own style. For example, if I want to talk about political novel on Iraqi literature, we have Dunya Mikhail. Dunya Mikhail is a story called Wishma Ta'ar, and it is translated into English. تكلمت بها عن الأزيديات وتكلمت بها عن الصراع في سنجار فإذا كنا نقدر نعتبر وأكو أيضا power relation فهل يصح أنه نعتبر هاي political المثل ما قلت لك أنه إحنا politics أصبحت في كل مكان ما دام أكو صراع بين السلف والأذر و power relation إذا أكو politics يعني هو الصراع السياسي ليس بالضرورة هو بين أحزاب وبين حكومة وأفراد هو ربما الصراع السياسي يكون بين أفراد اعتياديين بسبب تواجد الباور ريليشن اكو سوبريمسي واكو انفيريوريتي يعني واحد سوبيريور وواحد انفيريور فاكو قدش بداخل الاسره اكو احيانا صراع سياسي من يتحكم بمصدر الدخل فبالتالي هو يفرض السياسه اللي يريدها ويفرض الافكار اللي يريدها ويفرض متى ما كبروا الاولاد واصبحوا هم اللي يصرفون هم اللي يفرضوا سياستهم السياسه في كل مكان uh, yeah, I I know. Uh, يعني, um, uh, politics is in everywhere, but uh, uh, in Arabic literature, especially in the novel, in Arabic novel, uh, for example, we have um, uh, the um, uh, Arabian Spring, uh, and how uh, the novel, and how the novel, 
can oh and how the novel uh, reflect this um, um, idea and this uh, um, elements in the um, in the society and uh, um, uh, translated uh, uh, in, in the fiction. واحد يكون in the aftermath of, two thousand, of uh, September 11 أحداث 11 أيلول ورواية عربية تكون على خلفية أحداث الربيع العربي فتشوفين أنه التقنيات المطروحة في كلا النصين كيف كانت كيف استخدم هاي رواية كتبت على خلفية أحداث سياسية وهاي رواية كتبت على خلفية أحداث سياسية التقنيات السردية أو التقنيات الشعرية أو التقنيات المسرحية اللي اعتمدت في كل مصر ما أقدر أجزم أنه أكو قاعدة ثابتة لأنه كل شخص أصبح يكتب بأسلوب معين بتقنيات معينة ممكن يكون متأثر بشخص ما ممكن يكون غير متأثر ممكن يكون متأثر بعدة كتاب يعني فيعتمد ستايل هذا ستايل كتابة ما أقدر أحدده yeah. ف... فلهذا yeah. أنه يقول لي أكو قاعدة ثابتة مثلا أقدر أقول لك بشكل عام بالمودرنزم أنا عندي شيء اسمه سايكولوجيكال رياليزم وكانت بها البلوت فراجمنتد عبرنا بالبوست مودرنزم قال لا رجعت الروايه بها كرونولوجيكال اوردر جينا على الميتا مودرنزم اللي هو احنا العصر اللي عايشين به حاليا صارت حاله الاوسكيليشن بين المودرنزم والبوست مودرنزم ف ديبينس يعني ديبينس ابون ذا رايتر ديبينس ابون ابون ذا ايج ابون كلتشر يعني ديبينس ثانكس ا lot دكتور ثانكس ا lot ذا بليجر Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, tomorrow uh, we have another lecture. Inshallah. 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 Um, I'm still waiting. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. With a pleasure. With a pleasure. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Doctor. شكرا جزيلا اذا موعدنا ان شاء الله المحاضره القادمه سوف تكون غدا باذن الله راح تكون عندنا تطبيقات على نصوص شعريه او كيف نقرا او نحلل القصيده الشعريه وكيف نحلل عمل مسرحي راح نقدمها غدا باذن الله انا ودكتوره اروى باذن الله تعالى في نفس الموعد ان شاء الله اهلا وسهلا إن شاء الله شكرا شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا Goodbye.